The Elder Scrolls Online in 2024 is looking absolutely insane. If you didn't know, ESO is celebrating its 10-year anniversary with a huge event in Amsterdam this year. ESO is also set to release their massive new chapter expansion called Gold Road in June, which I've definitely been looking forward to, including a brand new feature called Scribing, which is similar to spellcrafting. Special thanks to Bethesda for sponsoring this video and giving me early access to check out the Gold Road chapter, which you can pre-order now using my link down below. But if you want to get a preview of what's coming up, including some major characters and story elements from the latest chapter expansion, then you can check out the Gold Road prologue quest for yourself completely free right now on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. You can even earn a very cool mirror mud crab pet by completing this quest. So to get started, all you need to do is open up the crown store and find the free prologue quest called Prisoner of Fate. This is the prologue for the Gold Road chapter, and it will add a new quest to your journal where you need to speak to Laramil the Wise in your local outlaw's refuge. The Gold Road prologue continues right where last year's Necrom chapter left off on a cliffhanger as you continue to chase after the mysterious Dramora Torvasard. At last you are here. Welcome, Proxy. Hermaeus Mora, Daedric Prince of Forbidden Knowledge, has marked you as Fate's champion. His adversary, Torvasard, once more moves against Apocrypha, threatening not only Mora's realm, but our world as well. Torvasard seeks to restore Athelia, a Daedric Prince forgotten by all. The memory of her was sealed in Apocrypha, but Torvasard remembers. Now, there's so much cool lore going on here, which was started last year, that I'm actually glad that ESO took their time and made this a multi-year story arc. We'll be seeing a lot more of one of my favorite Daedric Princes, for example. That's of course Hermaeus Mora, but also keep in mind that ESO is doing something completely different here, not just for the game itself, but in Elder Scrolls history, and that is introducing a completely new Daedric Prince to the Elder Scrolls universe. And from what we've seen, she's pretty much a badass. But the prologue quest itself is fairly straightforward. You'll need to travel to three different locations in the ESO base game. This includes Grotwood, Stone Falls, and Reaper's March. And in order to track down Torvasard, you'll actually need to find clues in the past. And this is where Laramil gives you a special relic called the Echoneer. So basically you find the right spot, you use the Echoneer, and you'll be able to advance the story and learn more about Hermaeus Mora and the Prince of Paths. And at each point, you also come across Torvasar, though in the usual fashion, he'll be one step ahead of you the entire time, and he's not exactly happy that you've been following him this closely. Fate's chosen. How presumptuous a title Hermaeus Mora has bestowed upon you. The Prince of Fate is using you, mortal. But one of my favorite things about this two-year-long story arc is how the developers have taken the time to show us both sides of the story, particularly through these meetings you have with Torvasar. It seems like we're always seeing one side react to the other, and although we think we know who is quote good and who is quote evil, the more the story unfolds, the less sure of that fact we actually become. How can a mere mortal understand the convolutions of oblivion? Prince Ethelia, the Prince of Paths, mistress of the untraveled road, Fate Changer, the Dark Reflection, the Last Tomorrow, she who saw and wept. Moira, in his jealousy, erased her. But you also encounter even more characters to set up the Gold Road chapter, including the Wood Elf Baragon, as well as Curate Gadain, and a really interesting new faction of monks, which lead you to a secret temple of Hermaeus Mora, which took me some time to find, but once I discovered it, it was well worth the walk. This is incredible. Look at us. Strolling along the seabed like it was a street in Necron. You can definitely expect to see more of Hermaeus Mora in this prologue with some new story details and some incredible voice acting, along with some decently challenging boss fights. This final boss fight in particular has multiple stages, not something you typically see in a story quest in ESO, and it did remind me a bit of Thoat Replicanum from the Infinite Archive, as you can definitely see the visual theme and some fight mechanic elements coming through. And don't forget to unlock your new mirror-themed mud crab pet for completing this quest, but if you're anything like me, the Gold Road prologue has only got you more hyped for the full Gold Road chapter, which is still to come. Now, while I haven't finished the entire thing yet, I do know the continuation 
of this story will be truly epic and we'll have a ton more to explore, not just in the new zone of Westweald, which we've already seen glimpses of, but in Athelia's own plane of oblivion. Of course, there will be all the content you've come to expect from ESO's chapter releases, including new item sets, new mythics, delves, public dungeons, and a new 12-player trial. Though keep in mind there won't be any companions coming with Gold Road, those are expected to arrive later this year in quarter four. But we haven't even talked about ESO's new scribing system, which allows you to customize your own abilities and is a precursor to the spellcrafting that we've seen in other titles. And this is by far my favorite new feature of the Gold Road chapter coming in June. This is gonna add 11 brand new skills to the game that are completely customizable. And what can I say, this feature is amazing. The skills that you can create are actually very unique. And this addresses one of my main concerns right away, which was that these were just gonna be reused skills from other classes and skill lines. But for the most part, these new skills come with new animations and new effects, even some new mechanics, and they're gonna open up tons of gameplay options for both PvE and PvP builds. What we're basically getting is one new skill for each weapon skill line, two new soul magic skills, one new skill for fighters guild, one new skill for the mages guild, and one new PvP skill for the assault skill line. So. 11 skills in total. As I said, each baseline skill, which is called a grimoire, already feels unique and interesting. For example, the sword and shield grimoire called Shield Throw literally lets you throw your shield against an enemy and has it return back to you Captain America style. The Torchbearer skill from the Fighters Guild has you swing a torch back and forth in front of you in a conal area, and the Trample skill from the Alliance War summons a charging horse that attacks in front of you in a straight line for decent distance. So already, as you can probably guess, there's tons of variety here, but we're not even to customization yet, which comes next with scripts. So each grimoire has a total of three scripts that you can use to customize and add different effects to the ability. The first script is now called the focus script, and this has the biggest effect on the skill itself. As the name implies, the script really determines the focus of the skill. Some options here include damage types like physical, magic, disease, frost, etc but also defensive and utility focuses like taunt, pull, immobilize, shield, and healing. The options do vary slightly depending on the grimoire, so shield throw, for example, could have taunt focus, while elemental explosion from the destruction staff skill line does not. Still, every skill had at least seven to eight options for its primary focus, so you get tons of variety. And next you have the second script called the signature, which gives the skill more definition and uniqueness, for example, with the Elemental Explosion skill I mentioned earlier from Destruction Staff, I used a focus script here of Frost Damage, and then combined this with a secondary signature script of Status Effect, which automatically applied Burning, Chill, Concussion, and Overcharge. Pretty nice, but there are many more unique options here, and this is where you can actually get the Class Mastery option. Every skill has this, and it's unique to your current class. So for example, on the Arcanist, your class mastery script builds one crux. On the Nightblade, it restored resources and increased my crit chance. But each class mastery script is different and this is going to, again, add a lot more uniqueness to each scribed skill. Finally, you have the third script called the Affix and this usually just applies a major or minor buff or debuff to your skill. Elemental Explosion actually has the minor brittle debuff as an option which seemed extremely powerful. So of course I use that one, but again, each grimoire has different options for this third script as well. Some even have major buffs and debuffs like shield throw, which you can give major maim or major cowardice to enemies or give yourself major evasion or major vitality. Pretty awesome stuff. So I easily spent, you know, three to four hours just testing out different versions of each scribe skill on different builds. Some combinations are decent while others are pretty insane, especially for PvP. You have tons of options here to make build ideas that we've never seen before. For example, now that we have two more soul magic abilities, I am definitely thinking about different versions of a prophet slash moth priest style build that uses nothing but soul magic skills, either as a healer or a solo build. Scribe soul magic skills were some of my favorites actually. One is an AoE skill with a massive range. So you could turn this into an AoE burst heal if you want with a small heal over time effect and minor courage. Or if you're crazy like me, turn this into an AoE pull ability that also snares and applies minor breach. But like I said, PvP with some of these skills is going to be a lot of fun. And if you're wondering about how you get these skills, it's all based on a series of quests that you begin in the new West Wield Zone in the city of Skingrad. It's here that the Mages Guild needs help unraveling a magical anomaly called the Scolarium. And by helping their magical knights, also known as the Order of the Lamp, 
who come across powerful magical beings known as luminaries. The Indric, the Netch, the Griffin, and the Dragon to start with. And each luminary has a series of quests that will send you all over Tamriel to unlock their power and eventually reward you with even more scripts. As you progress, the Knights of the Lamp also begin building up the Scalarium and even set up a merchant here where you can buy more powerful grimoires and other upgrades. And this is also where you'll come across skill styles, which are a way to change the look of certain skills, specifically certain weapon skills, guild skills, and even some PvP ones. But I have a lot more to say on this in future videos as this system will be hitting the PTS very soon and there's so much to dive into here. Once again, big thanks to Bethesda for sponsoring this video as well as providing me early access to the Gold Road chapter. Make sure to hit subscribe if you appreciate the content and want to see more of it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you around in the next video.